So let's go ahead and get into the contents of the box. So I think the contents of the box sh between you and I should have been relatively similar with the exception of some different flavorings and spices and, and things like that. So you guys can see here on the screen if you're watching live on Twitch or watching on YouTube. If you're listening in the car, I would suggest go ahead and finish out the episode, share it with a friend, but then go back and watch the video version because we're going to be showing pictures of, of our supplies and process and things like that. On the video so right now on the screen you're seeing the unboxed con contents um, so which essentially when it comes to ingredients included a seasoning grains uh, I think mine were like oak oak grains oak uh, flavored grains um, it, it contained a bag of yeast malt extract hops mine included three bags of hops you said yours included two I believe yeah I had two bags um, so that's what it comes with in terms of ingredients alone. And then mine also came with some oak chips, which I will be adding into the fermenting uh, wort, uh, I think, after a week. Right. And so that, does that line up with what yours included? Uh, fairly closely, you know, just kind of replace a thing here or there because um, you didn't have lactose. Mine, uh, I had to right. add lactose with the, uh, with the malt when I was stirring in the malt. Um, and then... You know, when you add your cocoa chips, I'll be, I'm sorry, when you add your oak chips, I'll be adding my cocoa nibs, um, you know, in, in a week from now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, it gives you a thermometer also. The, thermo the thermometer, the yeah, thermometer, thermometer is, was hu like hugely important. I feel like it was like, you could do this with just having, if you just had a thermometer, you could do most of this. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you had a thermometer and, a, and the carboy, it's like you're pretty much good to go. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the funnel, the funnel was hugely helpful. One thing that they don't tell you about um, straight up front and they don't provide is the, uh, is like a mesh screen. So did you use a, did you use a colander at all? No, I did not. I um, actually, after I boiled mine, which we're going to get into the process here in a second, but after I boiled mine, it really was not that much sludge quote unquote at the bottom of mine. So I was able to just pour most of it straight into the carboy without having too much to worry about. I probably could have, I don't I actually just didn't have a mesh strainer. Otherwise I probably would have used it, but um, I guess this will be one of those unfiltered IPAs that we've talked about on the show before. Nice dude. Mine had tons of sludge. It was like a really? couple, it was like probably like a half cup of sludge at the bottom. Did you strain it or was it literally just sitting at the bottom of the boil? It was sitting at the bottom of the sitting at the bottom of the boil. Um, it was just the malt and the hops and the and the lactose. And so when I poured it out, I I poured it into the funnel through a strainer. And so the strainer caught most of it, well, pretty much all of it. And it was just like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so the boil didn't break down everything. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, yeah. Hopefully, um, hopefully I did it right. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it probably is, dude. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Um, so I think that basically covers what was included. Yeah, I think the only other thing going in that you should know is not included, which they're pretty upfront about, is there's no bottles included. So literally, you've got everything you need to brew, but you have to purchase bottles separately. So they actually give you a, the name of a beer. It's Grolsch beer. I've never had Grolsch beer. I don't know if I've ever actually seen it, but apparently it's available in Total Wine near me. Okay. Um, it has a swing top lid instead of a cap. So it's like this oh. metal fixture that you pop, you flip open, and it releases sort of like a corking mechanism. You can pull it out and you put it back on. You, 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 know, you, you flip the little metal piece back down and it applies the pressure to hold it in. Um, so that's what they suggest you using, I guess, because that way you can reuse it and you don't have to worry about a capping set. But if you prefer to have just regular caps on your bottles, you can buy all of that through um, craftabrew.com. They sell bottles and they sell a capping kit. Um, and I looked at the prices on there. I looked at prices of Grolsch beer, number one, and to buy 12 bottles worth of Grolsch beer was going to cost me like 40 some dollars, I think. Um, to buy the bottles by themselves. Actually, I think I'm lying to you. I think it was like thirty some dollars to buy for the $12. bottles. Twelve dollars. 
yeah, twelve dollars or twelve bottles worth of girls. She was like thirty some dollars to buy just the bottles, which people are selling on eBay and Amazon that have those swing top lids on them. Um, was going to be more expensive than actually buying the beer from the store. So I'm like, hmm, which I mean, beer or no beer, empty bottles, full bottles. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> well, the bottling I, the bottling kit's thirty bucks. I was going to say, yeah, but then I went to their website. If you get the bottling kit, which includes 12 bottles and caps, and think, I think also the capping tool right. is 30, 30 bucks. So you're way better off just buying that, which I believe is what I'm going to end up doing. And I think it comes with 50 lids Oh, or yeah. 50 caps. So you it's, actually can do multiple bottles, like yeah. processes of bottles. And then they sell caps individually as well on their website, so you can just restock your caps once you get low. It says Which, uh, it, enough for three batches. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's the way I'm going to go. I'm just going to go to the website again and buy the bottling set and just replenishing my caps as I need them because it seems like, honestly, the most cost-effective solution. Yeah. Um, I hadn't really thought about it yet. I was just going to go on like you know Amazon and buy some, but I think I'd rather support this company. And I think I'd yeah. rather just do this. Yeah, and honestly, it seems like the most cost-effective means of getting it. So, yeah. But and just having yeah. that capper, that like, that tool. I mean, mm -hmm. that's worth the thirty bucks in itself. I feel like. Yeah. Exactly. So, all right. Well, I think we should. Uh, I think that about covers the contents of the box. I mean, I think they did a great job packaging everything up. There also, we should mention, is a five-gallon option. They do sell five-gallon kits. So if you want to brew more than, you know, one gallon at a time, you can definitely do that as well. But I think we should start talking about the brewing process. Yeah. Well, w real quick on that note, I'm just wondering how, I don't know if I'd have a pot big enough for five gallons. Like that seems, <laughs> that seems extreme. I feel like you would need some additional tools, but I'll have to go look at that and find out. Um, but yeah, yep. man, let's get into it. Let's do this. Yes. So. Yeah, just on that note, though, I, I remember brewing beer with a buddy of mine, and he had a giant, I think it was called a mash pot. I think it was six gallons or something like that, so you could fit enough. I mean, it was a huge ma a monster pot. But, yeah, anyways. All right, so brewing the brewing process itself.